There's a lot going on in our laboratories. Sometimes it's hard to keep on top of it all. And when you have your hands full, just making sure everything's running right, it can be easy to forget that you have to think about safety too. But safety is important, because if you're not careful, a laboratory can be a pretty dangerous place. We're all human, no matter how many years of school or work we have under our belts. And when things get hectic, we often suffer from an overwhelming urge to do the wrong thing, to take shortcuts and ignore safety precautions. So if you're new to your lab, while you're learning where the light switches are, you should also learn the safety rules. There's a wealth of safety information you should know. You need to learn about safety data sheets, SDSs, which describe a substance's ingredients, properties, and hazards. And there's your facility's chemical hygiene plan, which explains how to work with the chemicals in your lab safely. In fact, there are plans covering all types of hazards, including biologically infectious materials. You may read about things such as RICRA, lockout, tagout, and respiratory protection. You could also take courses on how to use fire extinguishers, perform first aid and CPR, and other important topics as well. But remember, the courses and written plans are only sources of information. You're the one who has to put the knowledge they give you to work. The ultimate responsibility to be safe lies with you. You should start by planning out your work carefully. Assemble all of the materials and SDSs you'll need ahead of time. Remember your personal protective equipment. You'll often hear it referred to as PPE. Select it based on the chemicals and procedures you'll be using. Each lab has rules about which areas require PPE, so you'll need to know this as well. Make sure you know where to find it. PPE is often stored in a central location. Any PPE that you need will be supplied at no cost to you. There are many types of PPE. Eyewear ranging from safety glasses to face shields is particularly important. Be sure to wear the type or combination that's right for the job you're doing. And remember, regular street glasses are not acceptable. Lab coats are also personal protective equipment. They help shield you from accidental splashes. Wearing the proper gloves is important as well. Choose them according to the hazards associated with the materials and equipment you're using. Check with your supervisor as to whether you'll need to use a respirator. If your work demands one, it's important that you be properly trained and fit tested. A respirator that doesn't fit properly won't protect you. Air purifying respirators, APRs, are the most common. They use chemical cartridges to trap contaminants before you breathe them in. A self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA, is only used in extreme situations. They're sophisticated pieces of equipment and you shouldn't put one on unless you've been instructed in their use. Wear sensible shoes in the lab, no open toes. Closed leather shoes keep spilled chemicals off your feet. Many labs require safety shoes with special soles and protective toe plates. Check all personal protective equipment before using it. If PPE is cracked or worn, it won't be effective, so get it repaired or discard it. Remember to remove your lab coat and other PPE before leaving the lab area. And wash your hands. You don't want to take contamination with you. It's important for the apparatus and equipment you'll be using in your procedures to be safe as well. Check each piece before setting it up. Everything should be clean and in proper working order. Glassware that is chipped or cracked must be replaced. Any amount of pressure could shatter it. If your work requires specialized equipment or containers, use them. Makeshift substitutes can be dangerous. Work to keep your lab clean and clutter-free. Report and correct any unsafe conditions.
Misplaced equipment or furniture can cause trips and falls. Move it to a more suitable area. You also need to know how to use ventilation controls, such as lab hoods. When it's working correctly, the airflow within an exhaust hood effectively confines and removes released vapors. An invisible curtain of air blows across the opening and keeps vapors from escaping under the sash. But you still need to keep the sash as low as possible. Never interfere with the airflow in a hood. This will reduce its effectiveness and could allow contaminated air to make it into your breathing zone. There are many types of lab hoods, so make sure you're using the right one for the process you're running. For instance, biological safety cabinets can find any potentially infectious aerosols, but might not be appropriate for industrial chemicals. Be sure to test any hood you'll be using to make certain it's operating the way it should. And remember to work at least six inches inside the hood. Storing your chemicals properly is extremely important. Try not to use bench tops or hoods as storage areas. Containers in these locations are too easy to knock over and are unprotected from accidental fires. Collect small quantities of flammables in UL listed containers with spring-loaded caps. Place amounts greater than one liter in flammable storage cabinets. There are special regulations governing the use of compressed gas cylinders. Cylinders should be located away from any sources of flames or sparks. Strap or chain them to benches or walls so they won't fall and hoses won't rip free. Ask your supervisor about the number of cylinders that can be safely stored in your lab. Knowing exactly what you're working with is essential in a lab environment. All chemical containers must be correctly labeled so that anyone who uses them will be able to tell what's in them. ACN may mean acrylonitrile to you, a potent carcinogen. But to someone from outside your lab, ACN may indicate acetonitrile, a common solvent. Writing out the proper name of a substance will also allow others to easily locate the chemical safety data sheet. Some experimental compounds may never have a written SDS. This doesn't mean there isn't a hazard. Make sure to determine the material's properties and take all the necessary precautions. Unauthorized experimentation, though, is never permitted. If an accident occurred and you weren't in the lab, no one would know how to handle it. What to do with chemical and infectious waste is another thing you need to know about. Your facility has a written policy on how to handle this type of material. Plan for how you'll dispose of any waste before you begin your work. A mistaken disposal could cause serious problems with public health and the environment and could subject your lab to harsh criminal and civil penalties. Ask your supervisor or safety manager if you have any questions. If there's an accident in your lab, it's vital that you know what to do. Review your facility's emergency procedures. You may need to dial 911 or alert on-site emergency responders. Walk every inch of your evacuation routes. It's important to know what areas you'll be going through. Talk to your supervisor about the emergency systems and fire alarms in your labs. Knowing the location of emergency equipment like fire extinguishers and spill cleanup kits is also important. But if you aren't trained, don't try to use them. Remember the watchword of safety is always life over property. Be prepared to deal with a chemical spill. If it's a flammable substance, turn off all sources of ignition. Know the locations of eye washes and safety showers as well as how to use them. 
If you come into contact with a chemical, remember to flush the affected area with water for at least 15 minutes. Then report the incident and call for medical help. Coming into a new lab can be both exciting and stressful. There are new people to meet, new materials to work with, and new procedures to learn. But most importantly, you'll need to learn how to do your work safely. Let's review. Know what materials you'll be working with and where to find their SDSs. Be familiar with your lab's chemical hygiene plan. Know what personal protective equipment you'll need and how to use it. Check the equipment and apparatus you'll be using. Make sure it's functioning correctly. Keep your work area clean and clutter-free. And know what to do in an emergency. Every laboratory has its hazards, but if you pay attention to your supervisor and know the rules, you'll be able to work safely all day, every day.